Hello, and welcome to the City of Toronto's presentation for aerial spray control of Gypsy Moth in 2019. Gypsy Moth monitoring is done by the Forest Health Care Group within the City of Toronto's Urban Forestry Department. We work using an integrated pest management or IPM approach in which we also balance the economic, social, and environmental aspects of damage caused by insects and pathogens to city trees. In short, we deal with a variety of bugs, fungi, bacteria, human and animal damage to trees. Identification, treatment method, monitoring, and prevention are the basic concepts of IPM. In this model, eradication of a pest is not the end goal. Rather, a balance or threshold is targeted at which a pest or pathogen is kept at to minimize damage to trees. This is core to how we manage gypsy moth in Toronto. In this presentation, we will go through the following topics. A generalized overview of gypsy moth. A brief history of this pest in Toronto. Current gypsy moth population levels. Treatment options for control of gypsy moth. Details of the aerial spray planned for this spring in Toronto. And a breakdown of the pesticide, BTK, that is being used in the spray. The European gypsy moth is native to Europe and was originally brought over to North America around 1869 in an attempt to interbreed with silkworms and initiate a silkworm industry. The gypsy moth had other plans and quickly began to naturalize and move throughout eastern North America. Gypsy moth is now well established in Toronto and parts of southern Ontario. Eradication is not feasible, but threshold levels can be kept in check with various control options. Gypsy moth is a defoliator, meaning a leaf-eating pest, which feeds on a wide range of trees and shrub hosts, but prefers certain types of trees over others, especially oaks. Toronto has had several outbreaks in pockets of the city starting in the 1990s, 2006 to 2008, 2013, and again in 2017. Gypsy moth populations within these pockets fluctuate from low to high and are not consistent across the city. This makes overall control difficult. The larval stage or caterpillar is the most damaging since this is when feeding occurs and can last up to seven weeks. Gypsy moth at any stage in its life cycle is not a human or animal hazard. They can be unsightly and a nuisance, but are not a health threat. Gypsy moth overwinters in an egg mass, usually stuck to the bark or in crevices of trees. Each egg mass can hold between 300 to 1,000 eggs. Parasitic wasps tend to destroy around 30% of these eggs before they hatch. Caterpillars begin to emerge in mid-May and are usually noticed into July. Initially, caterpillars are very small, but grow to a few inches in length and are voracious eaters which also equates to productive pooping machines. The initial small stage of the caterpillar is the most susceptible to pesticide spraying. Caterpillars become much hardier as they grow. Caterpillars begin to pupate or cocoon in late July to August and emerge a few weeks later as moths. Male moths are smaller and a darker beige in color and can fly compared to the larger flightless female moths which are whitish in color. Moths do not cause any damage to trees since their main goal at this point is to mate, lay eggs and die. There is really no control option at the moth stage either. As was mentioned earlier, the City of Toronto's Forest Healthcare Group uses an integrated pest management approach in which we determine what population or threshold level of a pest a tree or trees can handle before they start to go into decline. We can't eliminate gypsy moth, so we need to evaluate several factors to determine appropriate control methods. To do this, we spend a few months every year during the fall winter season surveying neighborhoods for gypsy moth egg masses. Egg masses can pretty much be found anywhere in the city, but volume is important. Trees with consistently high numbers of egg masses, 20 and up, will most likely need some form of control. An important point to note, however, is that a tree can have both new viable and old unviable eggs on it at the same time, which can be confusing. Controlling threshold levels of gypsy moth is possible, but it needs to be done on both privately owned trees and city owned trees. 
homeowners play an important role by taking care of their own trees before infestations hit critical levels. Gypsy moth feeds on a wide range of hosts, most notably silver and Norway maples, crab apple trees, black cherry trees, poplars, birches, and willows. And although feeding can happen on these trees, most of these trees can recover and regenerate foliage throughout the summer season. Oak trees and spruce are the most susceptible to severe feeding and have great difficulty in recovering from loss of foliage. Repeated heavy defoliation on oaks can cause mortality. This is why the city focuses on neighborhoods with valuable mature oak dominated canopies. When we have a dominant stand of oaks facing severe defoliation, then we risk losing very important canopy cover. Although gypsy moth is not a native species, there are some factors that help to control the population without human interference. Part of the reason gypsy moth populations crash is due to parasitic wasps and flies which destroy 30% of eggs before they hatch. A fungus introduced into our environment from Japan known as Entomophaga mammega also kills many caterpillars and a virus known as nuclear polyhedrosis virus also kills mature caterpillars. In both cases with the fungus and the virus, caterpillars are turned into liquefied blobs that drip from the trees. Not pretty, but very effective. A variety of treatment options are available for dealing with gypsy moth and should be considered by homeowners for their own properties. Egg mass removal done in the fall and winter is a good way to eliminate a bulk of potential caterpillars. Simply scrape off eggs, crush them, drown them, burn them, or scatter them to the wind. Keep in mind, putting the eggs in plastic bags and leaving them in your garage may lead to a caterpillar hatch in the spring, which may not be pleasant. Burlap wrapping in mid to late summer when caterpillars become larger is another simple way to eliminate a large number of caterpillars. Caterpillars will seek shade in the heat of midday and find shelter in the folds of the burlap skirt. Burlap needs to be removed while caterpillars are trapped and caterpillars must be destroyed however you deem honorable. Stomping, fire, and drowning are all common options. As infestation levels grow, spraying of pesticides becomes a more efficient option. Spraying needs to be done by qualified, licensed, and insured operators and can be done from the ground with pressurized hoses or from the booms of bucket trucks when accessible. A pesticide with BTK as its active ingredient should be used. BTK is a bacteria that disrupts the feeding ability of caterpillars, causing them to die. Spraying is recommended for vulnerable tree species like oaks with high numbers of viable egg masses and typically larger trees. Timing is critical and needs to be done when eggs begin to hatch and leaf growth has begun. At the city, we typically apply two sprays to affected trees three to 10 days apart. Caterpillars need to eat the foliage covered in the pesticide to be affected. Pesticide injections are another option available for control of gypsy moth. Timing is critical and also needs to be done by qualified personnel. Injection needs to be only done once in the year, just prior or during egg hatch. Injection is ideal for difficult to access trees or for isolated trees. Injections are not advisable on a yearly basis since they can cause physical damage from constant drilling. The City of Toronto uses a product known as Triazin for its injections. Finally, aerial spraying. This is not a simple option since it requires a lot of coordination both on the ground and in the air. Aerial spray is done in worst case scenario when gypsy moth populations are consistently high over a vulnerable tree species like oaks. It is best applied over a dense canopy since spraying individual trees in the lawns is not efficient or economical. Aerial application is efficient since it covers a lot of ground consistently but it can be costly and very time consuming to organize and is not something that should be relied on for continuous gypsy moth control. The City of Toronto will be implementing a helicopter spray in the spring of 2019. Traditionally, gypsy moth has been an issue in oak-dominated neighborhoods in Etobicoke and the Mount Pleasant Leaside communities. Our current 2019 spray boundaries can be seen on the screen and include historically problematic areas, but are much more expanded this year to deal with a large buildup of gypsy moth populations along the peripheries of these areas. 
A more detailed version of this map is available on our website, www.toronto.ca forward slash gypsy moth. Outside of the spray zones, we will be implementing several other control options, including egg mass removal, yellow and orange dots, injections and ground spraying, blue dots, as well as notifying homeowners of private trees with issues, pink dots. Currently, we have 20 blocks identified for spraying, approximately 1,350 hectares, which is the largest spray Toronto has ever done. Two spray applications will be applied by a helicopter to each of these blocks within 10 days of each other. Two twin-engine helicopters will be used to apply a very fine mist as close to the tree canopy as possible. Spraying will commence very early in the morning and will be completed by 7.30 a.m. on each day it is applied. Weather conditions are very important for success. Minimal wind and no rain are critical. Weather also affects caterpillar and leaf development, which are both critical for timing of application as well. Because of this, we have no exact date set in advance, but will be somewhere between mid-May and early June. Pamphlets and letters will be issued to residents within and near the boundaries of the spray blocks. Street signage will be erected within at least 48 hours of the spray and left for several days after spray completion. The pesticide being applied is known as BTK. BTK is a bacterium that is found naturally in the soil. BTK only works against a group of insects, Lepidopterans or moths, which includes the gypsy moth. BTK is sprayed onto the leaves of trees in a water-based formulation. Caterpillars, the larval stage of the gypsy moth, must ingest the BTK when feeding on the treated leaves. Once ingested, BTK becomes toxic in the gut of the caterpillar and it will stop eating within hours. BTK has been applied successfully for more than 50 years worldwide as a biological pest control agent and has been used in the forestry, agricultural and urban environmental settings. The actual pesticide being applied is known as 4A48B. BTK is the active ingredient within it and it is certified for use on organic crops. Health Canada and the World Health Organization who have concluded that BTK poses little threat to human health from either direct, i.e. spraying, or indirect contact with the product. Members of the public are unlikely to experience any symptoms if exposed to BTK. In the event that some people do experience symptoms, they will be temporary in nature and may include mild irritation to eyes, skin, and nose. If you are notified that you live in an area that is scheduled to be treated, you can avoid exposure to BTK by remaining indoors during and immediately after the treatment. You can also cover patio furniture and outdoor playing areas prior to the treatment. Additionally, you can wash patio furniture with water following an application period. BTK has been approved by the Pest Management Regulatory Agency, PMRA, for use in forests, woodlands, and urban areas. Furthermore, using BTK to control gypsy moth infestations is not a violation of the Ministry of the Environment's cosmetic pesticide ban, as the use of BTK is necessary to protect the health of trees. BTK breaks down quickly within the environment. BTK is not considered harmful to mammals, fish, birds, or other insects. If you have further questions about BTK, call Toronto Public Health or 311. Additionally, you can call the Health Canada Pest Management Regulatory Agency at 1-800-267-6315. The product being used for injected city trees is called triazin, whose active ingredient is azadiractin, a class 11 pesticide under the Pesticide Act and is considered to be extremely safe and is not harmful to humans, mammals or birds. It is also used on or near organic crops. It is produced from neem tree seed extracts, but is not neem oil. Triazin is injected into the tree's vascular tissue and carried to the foliage, where it will be ingested by the caterpillars as they feed. Triazin affects the growth and development of caterpillars, not allowing them to mature and reproduce. This concludes our City of Toronto Gypsy Moth Spray presentation for 2019. Thanks for watching, and please contact 311 with any further questions.